All right, my friends, we've got a new scoop for you. Precedia, Morant's 16 channel separates. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. <laughs> Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisalo with Audioholics. I'm here to give you some of the latest scoops that have been leaking all over the internet. It's on our forums. It was on AVS. It was everywhere. But I figured I'd comment a little bit about it. We are going to Cedia in just a few weeks, and we're going to be live streaming over at the Morant Sound United Denon area, and we're going to be covering all the great products. We're going to get the official information directly from Sound United at the end of September, but since there's been a lot of leaks going on, I figured I might as well go over this, guys, with you because it's exciting and it looks like it's pretty detailed on what we're going to see here. So these are the new separates from Marantz. This is a 15.4 channel processor and a 16 channel amplifier. And I think they retail for about 7,000 a piece. So we're looking at, you know, quite a substantial amount of cash. But when you're talking about flagship products from these companies, they throw a lot of tech into them. And as you guys know, and I've spoken about this in the past, I was a huge fan of Denon separates back in the day in the 2005 era when they had the POA HDC1 and the um, AVP HDC1. These were beautiful um, separates that I had, 10-channel separates, but they didn't have Dolby Atmos. And then Denon got out of the separates market for now. So the fact that Marantz is, is going upscale basically to this kind of level is quite exciting. And those back in the day were 7,500 bucks a piece. So it's not like this is a new price category for the brands under the Sound United umbrella. There's a lot of tech going on in here. And what I want to do is I want to share uh, my screen with some of the stuff I have. And again, I can't confirm this 100% is accurate, but it, at least it's something to talk about. There's some bullet points here. So let's start with the Marantz AV10, which is their 15.4 channel AV preamp. And you're probably wondering why the 0. 0.4. Well, it looks like there's going to be four independent subwoofer outputs on this model. And that is a first for Denon or Marantz. Even back in the day when we had the AVP, the Denon $7,500 10 channel preamp, it only had three subwoofer outputs that were independent. This one's got four, which the reason why we're really excited about this is most of the time we're telling people, if you want state-of-the-art, you want constant, clean bass in every seat, you really need probably four subwoofers in your room to balance out the modal behavior of the room. And the best way to control four subwoofers is to have independent delay, independent level, and also have the ability to do so many uh, local EQ if you need to. So this processor is allowing you to do that now with four independent outputs. Typically, like the AV8805 and below, those had either two independent subwoofer outputs or they had two parallel dependent outputs, which basically shared the same level and delay. And it's really key to get your time alignment right with your subwoofers and your satellite and your main speakers to get the best possible bass blend. So the fact that Marantz has given you this level of customization with the four subwoofer outputs is awesome. And the only other processor in this price range that I'm aware of that gives you four independent outputs is the Anthem AVM90, which is another awesome piece. And hopefully we get to do a comparison to these two processors in the future. But so some of the um, specs here, as I said, 15.4 uh, channel of processing. That's a lot of channels, guys. So now you have the ability to support you know, six pair of height speakers. You could support simultaneous wide speakers. There's just a lot of combinations of speaker layouts you can do. Awesome to see that kind of processing. And you've got seven uh, HDMI outputs, three, I'm sorry, three HDMI outputs, seven HDMI inputs. It says all inputs, all support 8K60, 4K120 pass-through. So there you are, guys. If you're a gamer and you've been worried about this whole HDMI 2.1 thing and you're, you're scared you're not going to have enough inputs, you've got them covered here. Uh, Marantz is throwing the very latest chipsets at this product to support all of the formats, highest resolution, every input. That is awesome right there. 
It says modern high resolution TV graphic user interface for 4K and 8K TVs. Now, that's great that they could do a GUI over uh, 4K and 8K. You know, most of the AV companies have dropped that because it's pretty intensive. It's processor intensive to do a GUI over 4K or 8K. You'll see a lot of the processors like the AVM 90s and many of the other ones. Even I have my $25,000 Storm processor. It doesn't have a GUI. It doesn't have an overlay like that. You do everything through your PC or you do it through an app. I'm surprised that Marantz at this level of resolution is still supporting a GUI. That's pretty cool. That takes a lot of processing. Again, of course, we got all of our audio codecs, Dolby Atmos, DTS X Pro, IMX Enhanced, Oro 3D for the three or four people that have uh, three discs on that. Otherwise, you can use the upmixer, of course. And we've got Odyssey Multi-Q XT32, which is what all Sound United products have had um since i can remember basically since the early 2000s but here's the interesting thing this is no typo d-rack live upgradable I, this is a first for sound united and it's in my in my knowledge of all the products on the planet right now i don't know of any that support odyssey and d-rack at the same time and it kind of makes me wonder well is this going to be confusing for consumers or are they or are the more layman um, consumers going to use Odyssey maybe because it's easier to set up and then they buy the Direct Live upgrade if they're advanced users and they want to get into a more advanced calibration because Direct does have more of a learning curve. And I'm wondering to what level of Direct will this support? Will it be the spatial uh, calibrations that we just wrote about recently? the spatial base calibration um, that'll use all the channels to get the best base in the system. And it kind of reinvents the way we're going to be doing calibrations. And I'm going to do a separate video on that because that's exciting news if it does support that. I will be having DRAC in the live stream at the Sound United booth at, at um, the end of September is when we're going to be recording the video and we'll be posting it shortly after. So I'm going to ask all these questions. And what I would suggest to you guys, if you have any DRAC questions, please put them in the comments below because I'm going to have direct access to the guys from DRAC, the ones that are putting this implementation into the Marantz product. So I can get all of those questions answered. Just give me some feedback down below. Make sure you hit the like button and share this video. Now, here's another interesting thing. I, I'm shocked that they're still using toroidal power transformers, and it says 19-channel monolithic HDAM design. So they're really staying to their audio roots of the old linear, really high-quality linear power supply design, which is interesting um, because most of the modern AV preamps out there are using SMPS that I'm seeing now. But... And I'm not saying one's necessarily better than the other. I still like a really good toroid power transformer, linear power supply. There's a lot of advantages to those. They are um, they could be very quiet and they could actually give you lots of headroom, especially with amplifier designs, but we'll get into that in a minute. The other thing it says is luxurious industrial industry design. And that's like, if you look at any of the new Marantz products like the Ruby and, and the P PM10, they have that kind of new aesthetic for Marantz and they're following that through um, with this processor and it looks beautiful in the picture. And the thing that excites me here is that this is going to be made in the Shirakawa Audio Works factory in Japan. That's their prestigious factory. That's where the old AVP processor from Denon and the amplifier in the 5805, all those products were made in the Shirakawa uh, Japan factory. And in fact, if you're a Denon or Marantz owner now, I believe if you are if you own a Denon 6700H and above, those are made in Japan. And then the Marantz, I think it's the 7015 or, the, or definitely the 8015. I know the 8015 and the AV8805 are made in the Shirakawa uh, factory. So that's just, um, again, shows you how serious of a product this is. The retail is about 7,000 according to this US, 9,000 Canadian. So the next one I want to go over is the A is the Amp 10, 16 channel, 200 watt amplifier. Kind of weird that they call it an Amp 10 when it's 16 channels, but I guess we'll ask them what the point of that is. Um, it says, according to their summary, the most powerful and customizable system to create your ultimate home theater made with the installer in mind for ease of installation and management for a high-end luxury customer. 
So this is another first for um, Marantz or Denon that they're doing actually 16 channels into one chassis. Now, this is um, based on their Hypex module, I'm guessing, that they're using in the PM10. I'm going to show you an image of that in a second. But this is a very good Class D amplifier module. And I'm about to post a video on the advantages now that we're seeing with the really good Class D designs. But the Hypex is one of the best. So it's a load invariant amplifier. It has very low distortion, very low noise. And the advantage here is that you have higher efficiency with Class D than a linear AB. So in this case, when you're doing a very high channel density in 16 channels, it makes a huge difference going from an amplifier that is at best 60 to 70% efficient at full load, a linear amp, versus a Class D that's 90 to 95% efficient. You're just going to get more of that power out of the wall that's going to be delivered to your speakers, and you're going to have way less heat, and the amplifier shouldn't weigh you know, 150 pounds. Back in the day when we had that amp from Denon, 150 by 10, that thing weighed like 140 pounds, and it broke my back putting that in a rack, carrying it upstairs. I'd much rather be dealing with amplifiers that are on, on under 100 pounds these days. And the fact that we're getting state-of-the-art design in Class D, it's become a reality. And now you're finally seeing a, a major company, a major Japanese company, using the Class D technology in their AV products. So this one's rated at 200 watts uh, at 8 ohms. It says two channels driven and 400 watts with bridge tied load. So I'm guessing they might be using maybe half the modules that they were using in the PM10. And then they're going to be bridge tied load in them to get uh, double the power on the channels that you don't need. If you don't need 16 channels, obviously you could bridge tie a few of those channels and get more power to the speakers. And we got to see if... How many is it going to let you do? Is this going to become an eight-channel amp if it's all bridged? I'm not sure. But here's the other interesting thing, the fact that they're, again, using the toroidal power transformer. They didn't switch to SMPS. And in a video I did on Class D, I talk about how SMPS is really, it's an advantageous power supply because it's lighter, it's more efficient. Um, but if you don't design it right, it could get noisy and they don't last that long. So you could have really problems with longevity. And I could see uh, the reasoning here that Marantz goes with a time-tested design, like their linear power supplies, because they want this thing to be super high reliable. And probably, you know, they're not at the stage yet where they've developed an SMPS that could perform as good as the very best linear power supplies. So it's interesting to see kind of a hybrid Class D with a linear power supply. There's a couple of companies that still do that. And I can't wait to get this on the bench and, and measure it. Of course, it says it has the Marantz HDAM design and the porthole analog level meter. That's pretty cool. Again, made in the Shirakawa uh, factory in Japan and a retail, <clears throat> excuse me, of $7,000. So I wanted to just show you guys real quick the um, what I was talking about with the PM10. So this is their two-channel uh, integrated amp. It replaced the PM11S3. It's actually has the Hypex Class D module in it. I think it uses four of the modules. So obviously this thing would be more, more powerful than the 16 channel amp. But it just goes to show you, this is a beautiful amp, measures great, sounds great. The fact that they're putting this kind of technology into a 16 channel chassis, and then it's mating with that 15 channel, 15.4 channel AV processor. That's exciting news. And you got D-Rack and you've got HDMI 2.1. So it is a lot to be excited about this. If you're on the market for really upscale separates, this is going to give everybody else a run for their money. And you know, it's got really good reliability when it's a Marantz or a Denon. So that's pretty cool. Tell me what you guys think down below. Are you excited about these products? Do you want to hear more information about them? and uh, give us your comments. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics or if you just want to ask questions. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.